going to introduce our uh, a good friend, Jeff Jernigan. Jeff is a Barnabas Group member, and Jeff is going to introduce our next speaker. And uh, I will let Jeff take it from here. Jeff, come on up. Thank you. Good morning. It's my privilege as a Barnabas Group member to serve as the chair of the board of directors for uh, Olive Branch International, which you're going to learn more about in just a moment. But first, I would like to introduce our president to you, Bruce Kittleson. Where are you, Bruce? Would you stand up, please? And, and our executive director, Colonel Retired David Farrell, right here. We, we will be at our booth just to the right of the door as you leave. Uh, if you would like to know more or uh, just have a great conversation about uh, ways that you can help support the Ministry of Olive Branch International all over the world. For the last 25 years, the Olive Branch has led thousands of men, women, and children to Christ through offering healing, health, and hope through health care, education, and aid in Jesus' name all over the world. This unique ministry began with their work in the international military community in times of natural disaster, war and violence, disease and famine, often in places of risk, closed to outsiders, and certainly closed to the gospel. Their ministry has spread beyond the military context to include hospitals, schools, and churches acting as first responders to earthquakes, tsunamis, epidemics, civil war, and famine. Here to tell you more about God's story and our story is Colonel Farrow. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Barnabas Group, Orange County. You know, with a group like this this morning, I can't think of a better way to start with kingdom-minded people than to do a 30-second Bible study. And so this 30-second Bible study goes a little like this. In the 10th chapter of Acts, Peter ministered to the international military member named Cornelius, and this resulted in the birth of the Gentile church. In the 27th chapter of Acts, Paul ministered to the international military member named Julius, and this resulted in Paul's life being spared and him continuing on to Rome to be Christ's witness for Christ to Caesar. And finally, in the seventh chapter of Luke, Jesus of Nazareth ministered to an international military member in Capernaum. And this resulted in Jesus making the claim that he had not found such great faith in all of Israel. At Olive Branch International, our why statement is, to minister to international military members, just like Peter, Paul, and Jesus did in the New Testament. We're convinced that when you focus on this specific harvest field, that strategic kingdom results occur just like they did 2,000 years ago for Peter, Paul, and Jesus. Now that you know our why statement, I'm going to briefly share with you on my journey to stand up here before you. And I'll use another international military member from the New Testament. That international military member was the Roman centurion who saw Jesus on the cross and stated with authority, surely that was the Son of God. His keen and accurate observation was documented in both the Gospel of Matthew and Mark. My personal takeaway from this scripture is that military members 2,000 years ago and today are skilled at observing reality and then making a compelling assessment. For the past year, I've observed Olive Branch International around the globe and this morning, I'm here to give you a compelling assessment of what I've seen. Before I speak about my assessment of Olive Branch, let me share you a trend that I've observed in the body of Christ since I've retired from the Air Force two years ago. That trend is that more and more Great Commission organizations are discovering the unique gifts and talents of military members. Let's take, for example, an organization near to dear to many of us in this room, and that would be the Master's Program, located in 15 key cities. You need to know that two years ago, Bob Shank and his leadership team committed to grafting military members into the master's program. In the past two years alone, the master's program nationwide has given 62 scholarships to military veterans to attend this three-year program. I was personally given scholarship number 46 to attend the master's program. And here's what I heard Bob Shank say on session number one back in February. He said, Quote, missiologists have stated that we are currently have both the people and the plans currently in place to reach all unreached people groups in the next five years. And that for the first time in 2,000 years, we can see the finish line in sight. 
Now, Bob's not here. He's briefing the Issachar Initiative, uh, a great commission organization focused. But many in this room know he's a marathoner, and he's running over two, uh, 20 marathons in his life. So it's not surprising that he used this marathon. Quote, we are currently at mile 25 of this 26.2 marathon. And he added, quote, I'm not interested in ministries or people that want to lie down at the 25 mile mark, especially when we're so close to the finish line. So therefore, my goal this morning is to convince you that Olive Branch International is indeed an organization folks focused on reaching that 26.2 mile mark and worthy of your support. This one mile to go focus was clearly seen at the genesis of Olive Branch when we started our global ministry 25 years ago with unreached people groups in Eastern Europe. For four decades, the body of Christ during the Cold War had prayed that God would open the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe to the gospel. In the early 1990s, God miraculously opened up the former Soviet Union and Olive Branch went into both Russia and Ukraine at the invitation of both governments. At the very start of our ministry, we saw a unique access afforded to our ministers by having a government invitation into a nation. At the very start of our ministry, we saw that we could play a unique role as a gateway ministry or door opener for the church in places limited to outsiders or closed. Through this unique access, we've seen that for 25 years, we've been a great commandment organization that responds to the spiritual, psychological, moral, and physical injuries associated with natural disasters, war and violence, and economic collapse. This morning, I'm not bringing you conceptual ideas or theoretical propositions of what we could do as a great commandment organization. Instead, this morning, I'm giving you a 25-year track record of an organization that's served in 20 different countries on six different continents. With your support, we want to expand this unique capability to more places on the globe as the Lord directs. Sri Lanka. Pivoting from Eastern Europe to Asia, let me shift your attention to Sri Lanka, a Buddhist nation with 36 of their 41 people groups designated as unreached people groups by the Joshua Project. After the 2004 tsunami hit, the government of Sri Lanka invited us into their ravaged nation to minister to their first responders. The government only put one restriction on our activities in the country, and that was we could not proselytize. We responded that we were the hands and feet of Christ, and we spoke with our actions. This photo is of us opening a dedication, four new homes that we built for soldiers and their families in the aftermath of the tsunami de destruction. This wheelchair-bound soldier is receiving his new home in this photo. Sri Lanka clearly demonstrated the compelling nature of our ability to bring a Christian message through a largely secular foreign audience of both civil and military authorities. Because of this unique ability in the body of Christ, we keep getting more invitations from foreign governments to be the hands and feet of Christ. Responding to 38,000 tsunami deaths in Sri Lanka demonstrated to our organization the criticality of the responding to natural disasters part of our mission statement. Since that 2004 tsunami, God has been doing something very interesting with our responsiveness to crisis. I will now share three examples of what appears to be God prepositioning us inside a nation before we are actually needed. As a new Olive Branch member looking back over the past 10 years, it almost appears to me to be like a man from Macedonia moment where God orchestrates where we need to be before we need to be there. Haiti is our first prepositioning example. Our Olive Branch ministry teams were invited into the country months before the 2010 earthquake that killed 200,000. This is a photo of our Christian fellowship ministry to the police force in the, in the capital of Haiti. Sierra Leone, Western Africa, is our second prepositioning example. In 2013, Olive Branch was on the ground in Sierra Leone to create the nation's first hospital chaplain program with eight full-time and 12 volunteer chaplains a full nine months before the Ebola virus epidemic hit Western Africa. When the epidemic ended, we gained and maintained the confidence of national civil authorities for staying throughout the duration of the epidemic and for faithfully being the hands and feet of Christ while this nation was walking through the valley of the shadow of death. This photo was taken six months after the World Health Organization declared that Sierra Leone was free of the Ebola virus. Here you see all eight of our full-time hospital chaplains in Sierra Leone. Ukraine. 
the largest nation in Europe as our last prepositioning example. Ukraine is where it all started with Olive Branch 25 years ago. As a result, Ukraine is Olive Branch's most mature and developed global location, showing the nationwide reach throughout throughout the largest nation in Europe, we have Olive Branch representatives throughout the majority of the 26 regions in Ukraine. Nine months ago, I traveled to Ukraine and saw firsthand the fruit of 20 years of labor on the ground. I attended the annual meeting of Olive Branch in Kiev and met one of our representatives from a distant region who served as a Baptist pastor. During the annual meeting, this pastor claimed that he was very thankful to be part of a parachurch organization like Olive Branch since there were areas in his home region where he was not openly welcomed into because of the heavy Russian Orthodox influence. The pastor stated that he was thankful that he could go into these areas as an Olive Branch representative since they are known throughout Ukraine as being an organization serving as the hands and feet of Christ. This Baptist pastor claimed that Olive Branch was indeed a door opener for ministry throughout Ukraine. And now to the God getting us into the nation on the ground before we are needed part of the story. After Olive Branch was on the ground for 20 years in Ukraine, in 2014, Ukraine came under strategic attack from Russia in Crimea and eastern U Ukraine. Ukraine is now facing an existential threat to their nation in which 8,000 have been killed, 20,000 wounded, and more than 1 million Ukrainians forcefully removed from their homes. Right now in Ukraine, Olive Branch is working with physicians, medical staff, chaplains, pastors, dealing with continuing war impacting military and civilian populations. If you are going to be an organization focused on serving the international military during crisis, where else on the planet right now would be more appropriate for you to serve than ministering to soldiers who are opposing a military superpower? So, this morning you've heard about the global sale of Olive Branch. We've developed over 25 years. Our past activities on the European continent and Ukraine the Asian continent in Sri Lanka, the African continent in Sierra Leone, and closer to home in Haiti. Barnabas Group members in closing, it is my prayer that this morning I have hopefully convinced you that our 25-year-old organization is indeed unique, compelling, and currently needed for the body of Christ in this one-mile-to-go season we are in. I hope I convinced you that when you focus on this strategic harvest field, that strategic kingdom results can happen just like they did for Peter, Paul, and Jesus. After 25 years of operating from the East Coast, we are now in the process of moving our headquarters here to Southern California. Compared to the East Coast, we believe that there are more encouragers like Bob Shank, Jim West, Brian Feller, out here in Southern California, who not only understand that we are at the one mile to go mark, but out here in Southern California, you are actively looking for one mile to go organizations. And you're not only just looking for them, you're crafting macro-level strategies and mobilizing kingdom resources to allow those one-mile-to-go organizations to collaborate together for such a time as this. That is why I moved here to Southern California, and that is why our entire headquarters is moving here to Southern California. It's not by accident that our first major Southern California presentation is here in front of the Barnabas Group. Will you help us write our next chapter out here in Southern California as we start to build our presence? If you are interested, we have many touch points to be able to bring you into our work around the globe. We are basically starting from scratch here in Southern California, so our needs are many. In the interest of time, please turn to page 27 in this morning's booklet. Thank you, Jim West. Thank you, Barnabas of Orange County. Thank you for your heart in advancing the kingdom. Let's take a second and pray for Olive Branch. Father, I just thank you for the, the vision that you gave uh, Bruce and Jeff years ago to uh, work with military across this globe and, and use that as a, a, a door opener to get in to share the love of Jesus with uh, people that they may not be able to find any other way uh, to get in and, and talk with. Pray that you would uh, bring people here today, Lord, alongside them that might help them, that uh, now that they're here right in our backyard, that... Uh, There'd be lots of connections, lots of touch points uh, for involvement. So we just lift that up to you, Lord. Thank you for their hearts. We just pray this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Take a second, go to page 27, fill that uh, form out, and uh, go ahead and tear it out. Get ready to drop it in the box either at the break or uh, as you leave. But uh, take a second and fill that uh, feedback form out for Olive Branch. Maybe you know people that uh, uh, would you know, be good connections with them.